Um, have you got well, your laptops open with the Desmos calculator on it? The scientific one. But... Scientific one, yeah, not the graph. We're going to try and not graph it on the computer until we've done it by hand. Let's see if we can actually do it uh, by hand first. Let's, uh, let's do it then. So we've got the height in metres of the tide above the mean sea level one day at Bal Harbour can be modelled by the function. HT equals 3 psi 30 T. All right. What does it mean, uh, that situation? What, what picture does it conjure up from your brain? Uh, what does it mean, the, the height in metres of the tide above the mean sea level? What, what does that mean to you? Global warming. But what, what are you seeing in front of you, just like the picture that we're talking and measuring? Height of the waves. Tide height. So what I'm, this is what I'm envisioning, right? Imagine that um, this is a harbour wall, yeah? And the sea... I don't know whether it's at a harbour wall or if it's in a harbour, so it makes sense there's a wall, right? At low tide, the sea will be like this, yeah? And it might be wavy, it might not be waving. Like we know in Bermuda, you can visualise a lot. If you've got a harbour, it could be absolutely perfect flat, can't it? So let's not confuse the wave shape by looking at... This is the height of the tide at low tide, yeah? All right, where does it end up? Let's say up here. That line would represent high tide. What does mean sea level mean? Okay, so where would that be on my diagram? In the middle, yeah, I'd represent that. So roughly, in the middle, that would be the mean. Um, I've, my spelling is atrocious. Uh, C with two E's, height with P and I the wrong way around. That's the mean C height, C, mean C level, it even says. So what is going to happen? Well, at low tide, it's going to be at that point. At high tide, it's going to be up there, and what will happen? It will go from here up gradually, yeah? And then it will drop back down, and then it will go back up. If we plot those heights, what shape do you think we're going to get? Yeah. So it's, going to, it's not going to be the... It's not going to be a wave at waves as in sea waves, but these would be the heights of the tide at certain times, yeah? Where the peak here is going to be the max, which is at high tide, and the down here is going to be at low tide, so that's the height of low tide, all right? Um, looking at this function then, what can we tell about how that's going to look. What can we tell about it? You should be getting good at this now. I don't know what. Go and put your... what, what can we know from, so we've got HT, actually, so I can put Y equals, are you okay with that? HT, Y equals, yeah, cool. Um, three sine 30 X, but in this case, it's oh, let's forget. Uh, so instead of it being y, it's going to be height, and instead of x, it's going to be t for time. Let me just plug this in before it all switches off. All right. So just looking at your three sine thirty t, and what we've talked about over the last week or so. Um, what can I know? What do I know from the function? What do I know about the graph? 
there are certain things we can work out, right? Can you uh, tell me what those would be? Good. Well done. The amplitude is three. Good. We're getting there, aren't we? So we've got an amplitude of three. In this case, it's three um, meters. And the 30 means there are 30 waves in 360 meters. Number of hours. So it's in 360 hours. Yeah. So if I were to draw that on my graph and I put zero to 360, would it look like the one we were doing before where lots of waves, yeah? Okay. Can I get you, because I'm, I'm aware, I'm noticing, have you made these sketches and have you written that down yourself at the moment? Because what we've just done, yeah, well, either, whatever, we're going to use your maths book to draw the graph. So you can do it on the paper or you can do it in maths book, but we're going to need a fresh sheet to draw the graph. On. So just what I've just done is I have analysed the question and got my head understanding what I'm supposed to be seeing. Yeah? I've not really answered the question yet. I've just gone, right, this is me understanding the problem. Let me just ask you one thing. I did this just before I even looked at the sign bit. Is this curve good to represent sign? I don't think so. You don't think so? As the shook his head, what do you think? No, forget the questions. Do my, does my graph, my just rough sketch, does it look like before you draw it? So I'm saying, Marley, don't draw it. Talk with me at the moment. Have I done a very good sign curve? Boys both say no. Why? Well, no, you can't just go with what's allowed. Why do you think? Good. And what does this curve look more like? A cosine. So actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to change my sketch now that I know it's a sign. And I am going to do, starting here, I'm going to go up and down, up, down. I'm just going to fit that. Does that make more sense? Bearing in mind it's a sine curve. Yeah? So I now that, for me, is a better understanding of what, what I'm going to be looking because the middle line is the mean height, yeah? That's the bit that go above and below, all right? So your sketch can look like the sine curve that it actually is. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about what an E assessment would look like, rather than just writing it down, I'm going to get you to draw a table. Right? Because in an e-assessment, there'll be a table for you to fill out for a question like this. Right? This would be one of the long ones. So you have T being 0, 6, 12, 18, 24. And then we would have our height. And you are going to work that out by putting it into decimals. Okay, are you all good with working it out, girls? How are we doing it? How do you do it, Luke? Um, I don't know. <laughs> girls, how do we how do we work out the value then? So when t is zero, we're going to do. Three sine thirty times zero, yeah? Is that right? Yeah. 
Press enter and we get the answer. Not on my screen. It's on my screen, but not on the big screen. What is the answer to that? Hopefully, you get the answer. Zero. Did you send it or are you just going to write that line? What do we get if uh, we do six then? After six hours. Zero again. About 12. Zero. Zero. 18, zero. 24, zero. Are we sure? Have a look. Three times six. Yeah. Three sine thirty times six is zero. Um, Twelve is zero. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. How to draw the curve that okay. Definitely not going to be a straight line. We know what it's going to look like. It's going to look like this, yeah? Okay. So, it's going to look like this, is it? How's it going to look like that? It's all zeros. Because what happens between zero and six? It has to go up and down. Let's just do a, a little bit of an analysis. How do I figure out how long one wavelength takes? The track. Divide it by. Yeah, good. The period, one wavelength is 360 divided by 30. Just have a minute. What do we get? 12. So 12 hours. So that means if we look at it, look, this table starts at zero, yeah, goes up, comes down to zero, goes down and comes back to zero. That makes sense? Right. So does it make sense that we have all those zeros? All right, let me ask you then, what about after, where is the peak? How long does it take? No, Fred, I'm carrying on. So. It's what? Three hours, isn't it? So if I put on three hours, how high would it be? What's the high tide mark? Three meters, yeah. How do we know that? Well, okay. How do I know the maximum height is three meters? Maybe I something one six six. Is it three sine? Yeah, that's one. It's three sine. It's got nothing to do with how many lines there are. Okay. So I know at three hours it is three meters. Where is it after nine hours? What would that value be? Yes, yes. Where would it be halfway between 12 and 18? So that would be another three hours. That would be 15 hours. It would be at back at three. Another three hours would be 21 hours, it would be at minus 3. 
So do you see how having this sketch, so 24 hours would be two full wavelengths, yeah? Should we not worry about it? Should we just finish this off and then you can ask me about the test question? Does that make sense what we've just done? Yeah. Right, now we've got to figure out how do we draw it. So I am going to just take this table of values. You see why a table is quite useful? So I'm going to put this on my graph paper. So I've got the information. Um, how do I draw this graph? Time on the x-axis. So I'm going to put a line down here, and I'm going to put a line to the middle. This axis is the time axis, and this axis is the height axis. Okay. What does my maximum height need to go to? Three. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put, I'm just, for me, it fits on my page. One, two, three. Remember I said about putting the lines in before you write everything? Check it fits. So there's my three meters. There's my two, there's my one, my zero. And then I need to go down as far as negative three. So I've got those ones in. How far do I need to go on my x-axis? Can you look at my board before you get on yours? Just so you've seen it happen and then you can reproduce it. How far do I need to go on this axis? Up to 24, yeah? So what I'm going to do, give me a, an estimate, Luke. How many squares do you think I should do for each three? Uh, like every three or four. Every three? Let's do three. So zero, three, six, nine, twelve, 15, 18, 21, 20, that fits. I, I'm happy with that, all right? So on my paper, it seems to work. So now I can write in, that's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. So do you want to set your axis out now? It looks like that. Time is in hours, and height is in meters. And on the computer, I do this, but obviously, um, for you, you won't do it on paper. I just do a gentle line. So I, on my computer, it's in like a dotted line. I do a gentle line at the maximum it's going to go and the minimum it's going to go, just so that I never go past it to help me plot that. Yeah. And then what I also do is I look at where the zeros are and I put a, a line down. So I know six and zero. So on six, it's going to be a zero. On 12, it's going to be a zero. I just sort of, because it helps me visualize, I like to have boxes to work in. So do you see why I put the box there? I do. What, what have I done? So I know, for instance, that zero zero I've got a mark there. Six zero. Go on. I was going to say that that's one of like the steps that we. It really helps guide my drawer. So I've plotted those ones now. So zero, zero, six, zero is plotted. 12, zero is plotted. 18, zero. And 24, zero. And then I'm going to go along my 
three, three, so it's up here. But then it's nine, negative three. Yep. Here's the tough bit. How's your artistic skills, Luke? Not too good. Marley's going to do well on this one. She's a bit artistic. How do you join those points? Good. You draw a curved line. What do we not do? Draw a straight line. We should not be doing this. It's very tempting to do that, but we don't. What we have to do, because we have already, if you look back at what we, when we were analysing the question, we know this is what I'm expecting to see, right? We already did that, so we kind of know that's what's going to happen. So that's why I've got my boxes, so that I can basically do each curve in a box and I can treat it separately and then I don't, it doesn't go all wonky. So there's that top bit, then I come down. It doesn't have to be amazing, definitely not. It just, yeah, exactly, we just need to get the right idea. It's a curve, it's not straight lines. We are going through those points that we put in our table, okay? Then my table and my curve good match up. So what are the important points? Well, you were asked very clearly to know where the zeros were, weren't you? Those were the ones you were asked for. If I just go back here, look. You were asked for 0, 6, 12, 18 and 24. They are the zeros. So which points do you think you have to definitely get right? Your curve must go through those points, must do. If you miss those, you'll lose some marks. And then the other important points are, where do you think? Getting the maximums and minimums in the right places. They have to be in the right place and your curve must go through them. Everything else, as long as you're roughly right. Yeah? Like Luke said, as long as it looks the right sort of shape. Mine's not bad. My last one's a bit off. I'm not happy with that. But... So, Mark, you had a um, in an exam question. About five minutes ago, you were about to ask in an exam. Maybe, but what um, what will tend to happen? It will probably ask you to drag and drop things. You've seen that in the one you did, right? We don't tend to. It will just like have the box up for you. Exactly. Now that doesn't mean people don't forget to do it. You know. It might have the box there ready to go, but not actually tell you you have to. And you have to look at it and go, oh, there's a the box, I'm going to use it. All right. How's your curve looking? Nice, good. Now you've got work that you could show an M1 and they'll be like, oh, wow, look at what you've done. That's far too difficult, never going to do that, it just looks impressive. Nice sign, so I don't care about it. Right, let's look at the rest of the questions. Determine the time of high tides and their maximum height. You can answer those now. Determine the height of the tide at four o'clock in the afternoon. A ship can cross the harbour if the tide is at least two metres above average. Determine the times when it can cross the harbour. Well, that's a tough one. Let's see what you can get out of those questions. A 
Are we all down at the floor, right? Oh. I don't want to move on too quick. So we've drawn the function. Uh, we've kind of answered this question already, C. Uh, determine the tide of um, high tides and then maximum heights. Can you tell me that? We've kind of already done it, haven't we? Yeah. Any other time? So we've definitely got three o'clock with three meters. Is there any other high tide in that 24 hour period? Yeah. What time is that? Three o'clock. So this would be 3 a.m. This would be 3 p.m. Okay. Determine the height of the tide at four o'clock in the afternoon. Four o'clock isn't here. So can I get you on your graph, can you find roughly where four o'clock would be? Yep. So let's just have a look at this just uh, quickly. Um, if I've got to find four o'clock, like Luke said, it's like three, four, I've actually done one, so we did one square per hour. So for me, that's the four o'clock height. So I'm expecting a height of roughly what? About about 2.5. It's definitely going to be more than two meters, right? Do you think that answer is good enough for this question? What did I say about these values on the graph? Was it important that we got them in the right place? What did I say? These ones are important. These ones are as long as they're roughly in the right place. Oh, this. So I've used my graph to get a rough idea, but actually I need a better way of finding it out. So do we have a better way of finding out the height at four o'clock? It is something to do with the formula. How did we work out the height, Alistair, when it was six o'clock? We used the formula. What was the formula again? The height is three sine 30 t. So at four o'clock, we are going to do when t equals four. Can you do that on your laptop now, your calculator? Tell me. So eight, so you eight equals three sine. So the height when t is four is going to be three times the sine of thirty times four. What do you get? Two point five. Two point five. So were we roughly in the right place? This is why, again, I quite like maths, so you kind of know what the right answer should be roughly, yeah? Okay. Does that make sense to So it matches what we were looking at, 4 o'clock, 2.5. My graph isn't accurate, so I couldn't use the graph, but it gave me an idea. What's the final question then? They should be across the farm period. How does at least two meters above the average level determine the time across the farm period? Okay, can you put a ruler, Alice says all we're doing, can you put a ruler along your graph where the boat is allowed to be at, where height is the boat allowed to be at? Where have you put it? At two, right? So if I put my line, have you done this yet? So the boat, 
this is the shape of the visit bay or a ship? The boat pilot. So, where, where does the graph signify that the boat is allowed in the harbour? Or above, right? So, is, this is one o'clock in the morning, is the boat allowed in the harbour? So I go up, reach here. Yes. No, no, it's not. Because it's below this line, yeah? So this is where, this is kind of like the highest level question that we're going to get, which is, we are only allowed in the harbour from this time until this time. Yeah? yeah? Or from this time until this time. Yeah? So we've used our graph, we've got roughly the, the ideas, yeah? Just after one o'clock, just after one pm, but we've only got a couple of hours, yeah? How do we find those times? Well, what we're going to do is this. This is tough. Full on, right? We need to solve the three sine 30t equals 2. Does that make sense, what I've just written? How are we going to do it? Because we're not putting 2 into t, because 2 is the type height. So I'm going to write this down. Are you going to write this down with me? All right, this is kind of this hard level thing, so I'm going to give you the solution which is, my first step is I am going to, and I'm going to work like we did with algebra, I am going to divide by three on both sides. Why am I going to do that? Because I've got three sine 30 t, it's three times. So I'm going to divide by three, that leaves me with sine 30 t is equal to two divided by three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the method that we did with our right angle triangle, which is I am actually going to do sine theta equals 2 divided by 3. How do I work out what theta is? Remember? That's the angle, yeah. But how do I find it? I do the inverse sine of 2 over 3. Can you do that for me? Quickly. Try and get through this. So, remember on your calculator, function, inverse sine a 2 divided by 3 is 41.8, okay, so that's 41.8, now I'm going to combine those two things and say that 30t is theta, therefore I know that 30t is equal to 41.8. Tricky stuff, right? All these steps. And finally, I am going to divide by, Alistair? Hey. Divide by 30 both sides. 
T is 41.85 by 30. Can you tell me what that is, Alison? Okay, divided by 30 is 1.3 nine so that would be the time from after 1.39 hours yeah 